So Nana, um, three words to describe Catford's season so far. Well, good evening, Tobies. <laughs> You know what? Flipping hell. I think we're done with the niceties, though. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Christmas is, you know, Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive. No, nah, it's true. Yeah, it's but... true. Um, three words to describe Casper's season so far. Building. Commitment. Confidence. And out of those three words, what's the most important for you? Building. Building, um, followed by uh, commitment and then confidence. Because I believe if you don't have the foundations, you've got nothing. Um, as you keep on building, you get a commitment, uh, people to turn up more um, as a squad. Uh, you get more players. And as you, as, because the players are committed, and as they're committed, you get the quality, you win games, and the, co co the confidence follows suit. And then, you, you know, you, 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 there's no way but up from there. Hmm. Uh, let's kind of go straight into this. You, you know that people actually want you to fail. <laughs> there are people that have said, Catford are going to fold. There are like people that have said, Nana is inept at managing and coaching. How do you feel about that? Um, the end justifies the means. Their, their vision is what they see in themselves. They're not in my head. They're not in my mind. They don't have my vision. They don't know what I know. They don't know the work ethic I put in. So they can say and do what they want. Cut for fold in the first few months. You know, cut forward, forward in a year with, with Nana at the helm. I welcome it. Let them say what they want to say. Um, if anything, it, it sort of drives me on. It, it actually motivates me. And like I said, because they don't have my vision, they can tickle themselves and laugh. Or like it. But you, but you must think about it, though. No? I thought about it in the beginning. Because I'm thinking, why? I mean, regardless of whatever you know, our, our differences might be, this is, this is men's football, this is grown-ups football, this is vet football. Um, we are coming out there to have fun. Yes, yes, it's competitive and all that, but, you know, where is this from? Because we don't agree on the topic, this is, it, and it's not just like it's, it's banter's opinions. It's just, you know, saying things without even thinking about it, you know. But if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. I can't change what anybody says or does, I can change my reaction. I can control my reaction to what somebody says or what somebody does. So the end will justify the means. Whether we fold or not, time will tell. We'll see. Why did you decide to take the job at Canada? Um, I mean, why not? We've been, um, I knew Ainsley was going to step down. Uh, since last season and when I actually joined there was conversations of oh this uh, this is going to be my last season for a long time he's he, he's always been saying that um and even prior to that being a player manager especially in the middle of the of, of the pitch like he was it's never easy because if you're a goalkeeper it's, it becomes slightly easier because you can see everything in front of you but being in the middle of the pitch having to concentrate on your game look forward and behind you and still manage the game, it's difficult. So I, we had conversations of, you know, if you have a good keeper and I'm not playing, I can stay on the sidelines. We can have a conversation. I can stay on the sidelines and, and take the, the team through the game while you play. If I come on, then you can go, go you know, on the side of the pitch and, and do it. So it, it was conversations anyway. So when um, I knew that he was finally going, we had a conversation and, it was like, well, I am definitely going, um, you know, I definitely want to stop managing and play. And I'm like, is this through the cat? This is halfway through Catford season? Last season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, it, it, I think it was, I think when it was, when I was in Colombia, that's when it actually, the conversations sort of moved, accelerated. Um, so it was, it was, it was even before, the middle of the season 
I think he had made up his mind uh, to go, but, you know, he actually settled on that. He's definitely stopping managing. So we had a conversation and I'm like, yeah, um, I'm happy to do it, but this is how I want to do it. I want to do my way, extra, et cetera. Spoke to Tony, um, Yinka, we had all had a conversation and um, we decided that, yeah, you know, I'll take over the reins once it's gone. Was there any conversations of you taking over the reins while he was there? Yes. The, the, the plan was he was wanted to stop play, stop um, managing, but still play. So I thought he was going to be there as part of the playing squad while I was managing. Because we had a keeper then, remember? So I thought he was going to be there. Um, but obviously, as the season came, um, the nature of the work became exponentially more difficult because he then left uh, Catford altogether, joined Hollington, and um, some of his mates followed suit. So we lost like five, six first-team players. Um, him, himself, Ainsley, Pato, Chris Walker, Doyle, Knotts. All the top of my head, these, these are the ones I can remember. Then they were like starters, first team starters, you know, all, all day long. So the work became more difficult than I thought. But do you say, well, this is no longer agreed. So you fold it or you call it or you... Um, you know, roll up your sleeves and, and start building. Yeah. Let's be let's be honest here. I mean, of course, you know, when you kind of took over, I think our first game was against Coolia and we had 15, 16 players. For 15. 15 players. Well, you know, yeah, we had the luxury of of substitutes. <laughs> but you know, and uh but since that game, again we we're, we're talking our first friendly, all the way up to the beginning of the season. All of our friendlies, we were lucky to even field eleven players. Mm. Um, how did like that make you feel? And and um, and she what like were the conversations that you were having with the players at the time? I, I mean, you saw in the group what I was saying in terms of commitment. And at the end of the last season, what I said when Ainsley announced that he was going was that I cannot do this alone. Um, if we are not committed, then we might as well part ways. Because uh, all of us, or at least most of us, I'd say, are good enough to join other teams in the same division or even higher. So if um, the comm commitment was not going to be there, then we might as well just um, call it. Um, my, my fear was that it was going to be a repeat of last season, where the whole season we went with 10, 11, 12. Uh, this, I, I can count the number of games you know, on my right hand and still have some some fingers remaining in terms of the number of games that we turned up with more than 12, 13 players. You know, and for um, that cost us a league, so far as I'm concerned. Because we are all over 35, some of us are 40, 40 plus, 45. And um, there's, there's going to be family commitments, there's going to be injuries, there's going to be whatnot. So if you don't have quality um in numbers, when all these commitments, family commitments, injuries, and start hitting, it's unrealistic that you think that you can win a league like that, you know. And that's what costs us a league, you know. So my whole idea was to was an ace to try and get more people on board and quickly rebuild. It's been extremely difficult because, like you said, you know. The friendlies again it was like we went to um, Ilford and we had nine men. Yeah. Summers FC. Summers FC. We had nine men. Uh, uh, Kawia, maybe because of the name Kawia, that's why we had a lot of people turn up to want to want to play. Uh, again, we had 14, 15 men. After that, every single game, Bromley, we had ten men. I think we no, I think we had nine. Yeah, nine men. We had nine. Um, independent is when we had independent. The B team is when we had. Um, 13. But apart from our, that, all the friendlies, we, we, we've been unable to prepare properly because we've 
never had the full complement of the squad. So if you have opposition playing for you, I mean, what are you doing? You know, if it's a, listen, I'm going to give you two players so you can have a, a team to field, you know. So it went on and on in the group that, listen, we need to fix up or we call it no hard feelings, you know. Um, I know how I do things. I, I will be there every week unless I physically cannot, unless it's impossible for me to do. And I need everybody to be at least 70%, 80% of, of what I put in and we'll be fine. You know, so, so far I'm concerned, our, our, our first three games of the, of the season were actually friendlies. That's how we actually be able to put things together and work. You know, um, LSU Masters, mm. we turned up what, nine men? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, uh, exactly. friendly. So, um, yeah, but we, we've come, we've come leaps and bounds from that. So um, we can only continue to build and get better. What was the first thing that you wanted to change um, once you became? And, and again, I think it's the, it's probably the worst kept secret. And I know that we were supposed to have this conversation a long time ago, but you know, yeah, that you were, you are the manager, and and um, and I kind of wanted to announce it properly, but hey. Like we are doing it now, but what's the first thing that you wanted to change regarding uh, Catford Wanderers? Um, I think it was to make this more of a team than anything. In, in my humble opinion, the we had a, we had a lot of ballers last season, but collectively, we're not much of much of a team because there were. There were a few clicks here and there, and sometimes it, that caused division in, in the team. And the first thing I wanted to do, as much as, you know, preach to everybody, the, the, you know, the art of commitment, I wanted us to gel and bond together as a team, to get that team mentality. Because for me, they are the, they are the foundation of everything. If you are willing to fight for your bravery on the pitch, um, there's nothing you can do. There's, there's, there's strength in numbers. There's strength in um, everything, believing, everyone believing in the, in, in the course, in, the, in, the, in, the, in one objective, in a goal. And if you can get everybody on board that, again, the sky is the limit. So that the mentality, the, the, you know, the idea of family, the idea of strength in numbers is what I wanted to change um, as opposed to the way we were last season. You uh, mentioned regarding our first three games of the competitive season as mm. as our friendlies. What was the t um, what was your takeaway from the Groversham game? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I know what my takeaway was, but hey. So Groversham, uh, you know, as, as, when we finished the game, I, I broke it down into the group in terms of losing the, losing the ball thirty eight times in the first half. You know, and these were, sometimes these were just unforced errors. The, yes, the pitch was hard, it was bumpy. It was no excuse. There were very, very good players in that team. And we made the opposition look like Barcelona at times. Because we were so disjointed. You know, um, the second game we had... LSU, I believe. I can't remember. Yeah, we, remember. we had LSU. Did we have LSU? Yeah, we had LSU. Are you sure? Yeah, we drew. Yes, the free free. We had LSU. And um, I think when we opened the air, we cleared the air, I mean, for the first game, everybody sort of, <coughs> excuse me, understood. Everybody said what their piece in the group, everybody sort of, was quite honest about their performances and the quality performance as well. And um, even after the game, my takeaway, I was happy because everybody was angry at the loss. I, I remember we stayed almost like 30 minutes on the side of the pitch um, talking about the game, talking about this and that. And I knew something was working because if you don't care, after the game, you just get up and you go home. But if you sit down for 30 minutes after the game to try and talk about what's just happened, 
be ashamed of it and be prepared to learn and do better, I knew that baby steps were being taken, those small progress over there. And that carried on right into the LSU games. I think LSU game, we, we had 14 people turn up. Um, we should have won the game, a 2-0 up, you know, they came back, they went 3-2, and then we drew at, you know, at the last moment. But I guarantee you that the previous season, a game like that, we would have lost. Because when the goals started coming in, people, the, the heads would have gone and mistakes would have happened and people would be tired and losing concentration and would have lost. But the fight to come back into that game was amazing uh, for me. And again, it was another step. It wasn't a win, you know, but it was a point. And when you start building, you you, you go out, you, you start winning straight away, but not playing well. Me, I'm not, I won't be happy because I know that it's, it's just pure luck and it will get into people's heads and they'll start thinking, oh yes, yes, we are the bee's knees. No, we worked for it. Every point, every win we've got, we have so we have worked properly for it. I think after LSU we played New Park. New no, New Park? Yeah. Parkwood. 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 Um we went there decent performance. Uh we beat them one nil. Yeah. Clean sheets. No, it's Bow Street. Yes, sorry. Both Apologies. Three. Ball Street would be them. Is it 2 0? 2 0, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I can't remember, actually. I think, yeah, I think it was, it was no, 1 0. 1 0, because they were in the game to the very last minute. Okay. Yeah, we beat them 1 0. Um, very physical game. But then again, it was it, it's the fight and the attitude of people to want to play and to want to win. And when I'm seeing that, I know that we have built and I know that people are understanding the project, understanding, um, you know, the the idea of togetherness, of the team spirit, and um, it's working. Those are the first three games. And um, I'm, I'm, as I say here now, I'm happy with the way things have turned up because we are fighting for everything that we want. I think there's enough quality in the team to um, do a lot better. So as we've sort of stabilized the ship very, very quickly, being uh, defensively solid, um, because those games, first game consisted of three goals. Uh, second game, three goals, even though we drew 3-3. Three, three. Third game, we didn't concede. concede. Then we played um, Kawuya. Again, we should have won that game. First half. We should have won that game. So many chances. We're 2-0. No. Yeah. Was it 2-0 up? 2-0. Yeah. 2-1, 2-2, 3-2, 4-2, 4-3. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so um, we're, we're building. And um, after that, we haven't conceded since. We beat uh, Parkwood again. Uh, LSU. LSU and yes we lost in the London Cup to uh, LSU Masters um, in a very well fought game again we lost 3-2 but um, in all this the performances uh, you know tell you that some of the games we lost we shouldn't really have lost and this is us not even being at full tilt you know, but also you've got to give credit to the teams that have beaten us. They have, they have like found a way to to like break us down. Hundred percent. And I think one thing that I've definitely noticed that is that we're not scoring as many goals as we were last season. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like love to get your um, um, opinion about that. And again, I'm not saying that it's for strikers or the offensive players because of course you know because of course everyone that chips in with like goals you know everyone attacks and everyone defends as a team but i would like love to get your like thought about it last season we had ainsley chipping the goals we had boogie chris walker banking the goals and um 
Chris, for example, he had, you know, his scoring goals every week. Yeah, I think it was over 20, I believe. Yep. Um, Johnny was shipping the goals as well. Um, but this season, with those players gone, we've had to build. Um, Ashley um, was injured for a while. So was Gaps. Well, I mean, Gaps is retired. Gaps is retired now. So our goal threat, which was there last season, wasn't there this season. So we've had to build again. We've had to build now with Obin. We've added two new, you know, amazing quality to the team in terms of um, um, Steph and uh, Dan. You can already see what Steph will do uh, with Obin. Johnny has been playing everywhere for the team. So not exactly settled, um, you know, he sacrificed so much for the team. Um, and I know that if you play Johnny, say, in the number 10 role, um, you play in there consistently, he's going to get you the goals. And it's not for lack of trying. He's played in the midfield, he's played on the wings, he's played left, right, up top, he's played everywhere, you know. But I, I, I know that once you're settled and he plays in a consistent position, the goals are going to come. So actually, why don't you give him the opportunity to play in the position in the position that he wants because to i've not had the personnel to be able to do that consistently there's a couple of games that he's played in that role um but i've not had the numbers and the personnel on the pitch to be able to do that you know we at the moment we've had we have junior who's been there every single week um we've had obin who's been um you know there as well uh, we, we we desperately miss Seb. Hopefully, he comes back from injury. Um, you have to give people the opportunity to, you know, play when they're turning up for training. They're coming to games. Now, you can't play Johnny um, in as as a striker and play, for example, Junior on the wing. That's not his strong suit. Um, Johnny on the wing or in the midfield, can you can get a lot of work out of him. You know, he's honest on the ball, off the ball. He will work uh, because he, he just has the lungs to be able to go up and down. Junior will do the best of his ability to stay up front, try and, you know, play on, on, off the striker and try and get a goal. His forte is not coming into midfield and going up and down. You'll be wasting him. You 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 you'll get him done in 30, 30, 40 minutes. And when you have 11, 12 players, that's not the best thing to do. So I def de I definitely believe that once the, the, the team is settled, remember we still have Gary to come back. Mm -hmm. We have Alex, mm -hmm. we have JD, uh, we have Seb to come back. Cool. Um who else do we have? We have Craig, uh, right back to, to come and join the, the, the squad. Uh, we have Francis to come back in the midfield. So we still have a lot to, a lot of players, six players who can um, definitely start a game of football for us, all missing. So once everybody's in position, people will be able to play in their natural positions and then we can continue to build from there. Right now we are working as a team, playing where we, where people need to be to make sure that we have enough people on the pitch and carry out a game plan with the person that we have. So we are chopping and changing, you know, as and when we can. But imagine if I have that um, 18 people there with my, with my, my preferred 11 and um, quality of us on the bench who can come on and change a game. People will play in the natural positions. It would be a beautiful headache for me. 18 is quite a lot, though, to bring in every, like... Love it. 18 every week. Love it. Has it has it not been proven? But then there's going to be some players that are going to say, well, why am I coming if I'm going to be on the bench? That's my job, to make sure that everyone... I'm honest with everyone. Um, everyone knows that I don't have a... I don't have favourite players... That if you don't come training, you, you step up, you come on Saturday, you turn up, you turn up, you play. I don't do that. I'm not the kind of guy. Um, if 
I'm honest with everybody and I, and I explain to everybody that this is a this is a team effort. We have a minimum of between what, depending on the cup cup runs, we have a minimum of maybe like 15 to you know 30 games a season. We are all over 35s. You can't play every single game of the season. So if you play 60 minutes, some somebody plays 30 minutes. The next week, somebody somebody plays 60 minutes, you play 30 minutes. If everybody buys into the idea that collectively we want to work as a group to, to win something, if everybody buys into the idea, we'll be fine. It's not about you coming in and staying on the bench. Santos have proven it. For the last three, four seasons, they've done it. And they've won the league with it. They, they, every time Santos come to a game, how many players? There's this something like 19, 20 men. So even the even the, the seven on the bench, we allow seven substitutions, by the way, or the eight or the nine on the bench, there's only seven who get to play. And they rotate. So if we 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 explain that sense of teamwork to the team for everybody to understand, and everybody's gonna have commitments at some point. There's going to be injuries at some point. There's going to be days that somebody cannot come to football at some point. Everybody gets their chance, you know? So it's a strength in numbers. Um, do you or management speak to players who haven't played or, or you who have just come onto the field and played about 15, 20 minutes? Every week. Even the injured players. Every week. Do you? If I have... I've been injured. I've not had a phone call from anyone. I've not had a phone call from anyone, bro. How? how really? Uh, who? I haven't spoken to you. About what? As in about my injury? I haven't. The first time you were injured, the next, the following, the, the same week after the game, hmm. did I not speak to you? Y yeah, you said. I spoke to you about the game, about the injury. I actually, actually made fun of you because you had your head down and your ass up in the air <laughs> in a game of football. <laughs> Does that ring a bell now? You only spoke to me to say to Breeze, make sure that you're refereeing. No, no, no. We spoke about the game first. We spoke about how your injury is. I told you to stretch. I told you to continue to stretch it, if you remember. You see, you take some things for granted. I told you that. And then we spoke about refereeing. But of course I recorded, so maybe I can share it with you. And then, and then you can see what I mean. But I, 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 listen, if I had... Limited calls. I'll run out of data every week in terms of the number of people I speak to on a weekly basis. From management to players to find out why they're not coming to football or, or you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are, that go beyond football that we actually talk about. You know, with players who are not playing, with players who are getting, uh, you know, less playing time. I, I guarantee you, if I had limited minutes, I will run out of minutes every week. So I speak to people a lot. Guaranteed. Okay. Let's kind of talk about uh, refereeing in that general. Um, I think it's been about a week since the incident in Turkey oh, yeah. uh, where the former president, because I believe he's handed in his re his resignation, yeah. came onto the, you know, came onto the pitch. And, and again, that, that was absolutely disgusting. Um, taking it to our our league, uh, the Seven Bets Football League. And, you know, of course, you are um, the uh, referee's secretary as well. What are you doing to protect the referees in the league? So uh, going back to the Turkish, the Turkish situation, you know that the, the bottom um, club, just this past weekend, a referee didn't give a penalty. And the president came on, on the pitch and literally dragged the players off the pitch. Serious? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was happy with the FA stopping football for a while while the investigations went on and so on and so forth. But I think there's, this, there's some sort of, that sort of um, sense of entitlement within that league in terms of the owners of the club that they feel that they can do anything. Um you know, um, and bring the name of the game in disrepute, but it, it, that's them. When it comes to South Invest Football League, it's 
it's not what I'm doing to protect the referees. It's what I'm is is the conversations we're having for them to be able to protect themselves. There's things that you can do to avoid conflict. Um, it, it comes from match preparation. It comes from coming to the pitch early, um, checking the net, checking the pitch, talking to the, establishing a, a rapport with the managers and even the players. Setting that clear standards in terms of this is how you're going to referee. This is what you want to see happen to the game of, in the game of football. So that once you start giving decisions, that there are no surprises. But I'm not saying anybody should lift their hands and hit a referee or abuse a referee in any shape or form. All I'm saying is there are things that you can do to avoid those things happening. You know, idiots on the field of play will be idiots irrespective. They're bringing the whole baggage from somewhere else to the field of play. And you are just going there to do a job. Sometimes it's just your hobby. They don't understand that. They take it so passionate in the sense that when it's not even that deep, they go on the route that, you know, sometimes it's not, it's not even feasible. You don't even understand where they're coming from. Now, um, if I'm referring a game of football, as much as I'm strict, if, if you show me respect, I show respect to you. Very, the very beginning of the game, I talk to both teams, let them know what I expect. So there's no surprises. If captains want to talk to me, if players want to talk to me, that's fine. But it depends on the way you talk to me. If you if you look at the Premier League all the way down, you can lip read some of the things that the, the players say to the referees. And there's no actions taken. Why would the kids in grassroots football, the adults, even in grassroots football, not follow suit? You can clearly hear them swearing at the referees. Clear dissent and nothing is done about it. Now they are doing something about it. So let's see what they've introduced in Vince. It's reduced dissent to a certain level, but dissent is still there. Now they are going to they are, they are, they are introducing that, not St. Vince per se, but they are clamping down on, on dissent at the higher level. You see that um, Michael Oliver last week showed, you know. <laughs> now, he's a very brief referee. You cannot do... I, or to all my referee colleagues, I'll say, do not do that at grassroots level. That's crazy. Do not do that. Do not even think about doing that at grassroots level. I mean, if there's two fouls cool. in 10 seconds, in five seconds, you've played advantage. Yes, you can bring them back and go, bang, that's for the first foul, bang, that's for the second foul, red card. But if you do that, what Oliver did in, at grassroots level, I won't be surprised if you get physical or verbal abuse. That's what I'm saying. Um, that's a billion dollar industry. Where we are, we are paying to actually play. So it's a, it's a whole completely different ter terrain. Um, but that being said, especially the young referees, I talk to them and debrief them the, the game. I give them tidbits on what to do to protect yourself, to avoid conflict. And that's the only thing that you can do. Referees about managing... Um, 22 men. And may, may I'll say 90% of that is managing 22 eagles, grown men or boys or girls, or whatever it is. Only 10% is that really application of the law. And you need to know when and how to talk to a player. You need to know when to be firm. You need to know when to be, to be, to be quite relaxed about it. You, know when, you need to know when to smile because there are players who see you see that you're timid and they walk all over you. There are also players that if you talk to them with respect, you get it back. In the game, I'm always talking. Don't foul, don't foul. That's a really good tackle. Play on. You know, if I'm telling them, no, don't foul, don't foul, you can clearly see that the way you're running, I'm anticipating there's going to be a foul happening. So if you're hearing that, you probably not foul, or even if you foul and I whistle, you know that I was anticipating that. So there's, there's not a surprise. So 10 years, please keep stepping away, keep stepping away. Come to me and let's have a conversation. The conversation, the way you talk to them can avoid a lot of things. This is what I do with the referees on my panel. The conversation that we have 
before and after game, especially the young referees and even 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 the the the, the all the referees, um, to learn from each other and make sure that some situations don't happen again. Let's be honest, like we both know that there are some poor referees out there. Yep, we've both experienced poor decisions when playing. We've both experienced referees responding back in a very not aggressive, but a kind of very direct way to players. And, and you know, I have to commend, cert, you know, certain players and certain clubs for refraining themselves for not going that extra step. Don't you think referees, when they pass their, their course, should be retested after a few years? Because, and again, you know, it's, you know, like with driving, after a certain age, you have to retake your test to make sure that you are you are safe for yourself and and uh, you know other people on the roads. Sometimes you make some really stupid analogies that no, but I don't. But when you when you pass your li- your license at, at sixteen years or eighteen years old, yeah, it's not until you are what sixty five that like, you have to yeah, but so from eighteen to sixty five. How how so you you want to say a referee passing the the, the the test at like fourteen? Should be retested at sixty five. I'm not saying at sixty five, but of course. But if you're likening it to hold on, hold on to driving, let me finish. Let me finish. So she, when like you pass your test, yeah, mm-hmm. so that she where as she, how like you drive now. Do you know that there's how many rules that have changed? Yes, it's exactly with um, refereeing. There are certain rules that have changed from she when someone passes this year, like myself. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that the rules will change within a couple of years. So she, why? Cat referees go on a refresher course, not only just about the laws of the game, but exactly what you said before in terms of. Um, Let, let's, let's move from that man, from, from the, that analogy from from why from driving because if the law lo- the, the laws of the road change, mm. it's not like a football pitch where you are going every week to see it's communicated through to you through IFAB. You watch football every single day, right? You know what's happening. But that doesn't mean it, I It's expected. You, 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 but it's expected. If you, as a referee, you, you ultimately learn the rules uh, because it's on the radio, it's on TV, um, the new offside rule, the new handball rule, the shoulder, the new, everything, right? Now, Tell me one law change in terms of driving that's communicated on the airwaves or on TV that you have to learn to know. Driving, you're on the road, you're in a dangerous metallic box. Mm. There's a speed limit. There's indicators. There's what you can do in the vehicle. Of course. But again, some like people don't, don't know. But you can't really compare that to football though. Yeah. When we come to football, yeah. when, it come, when we come to football, I don't think referees are, are expected to educate themselves on the laws of the game as it goes on. But like I told you, the laws of the game are really, in my opinion, about 10% of what actually happens on, on the field of play. Because the, the reason why the referee course itself has changed from a 12-week course to like a two-day course is that everybody knows football now. Everyone thinks that they know football. Everybody does know football because you watch, <coughs> excuse me, you watch football every single day. You know football. So it's easier to actually learn a condensed version of the laws of the game and apply it on the field of play. But that's, like I said, that's only like 10% of it. The other 90% is, act, is, is actual man management. That's why before referees were prominent men in society, like, like the police officers and firemen and that. So they were respected people in the society already. You see what I'm saying? So people, they had a fear of them already. If, 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 if a policeman is, tell, is, is telling you, this is what I'm saying, I whistled, you're not going to come and give them any sort of back chat and verbal abuse, are you? You're going to just keep it and carry on. But now it's quite different. Very different. There's so much money in football. They're putting so many cameras in football. They're trying to change everything to try and make it perfect. 
other than actually letting common sense prevail. And I'm not against VAR and, uh, you know, GOT and, and all sorts. But for example, the, the, the offside um, system that they are using, um, that, that they were trying, trying out, what they showed on TV, it was so clear. In the World Cup. In the World Cup. It was so clear and so easy that you could see. It's like, it's like, it's like a race, it's like a photo finish. That's the way it was so easy. You can, you can, you know what it, the computer just tells you. you. You can clearly see it. But now a human being has to come and determine where the ball left the boot of the man who was passing the ball. That could be inches. That could be millimeters. And that could be the difference between somebody being onside and offside. And then they have to draw the line of, of the last man, uh, you know, the striker. It just, you're still leaving too much room for human error. And that's what the problem is. Ref oh, sorry. No, no, re referees, some referees are good, some referees are bad. Some referees just go out there for the money. They don't really care about it. They just turn up and want to whistle and take the money and go away. Some of us, we want, we actually want to enjoy the game. We actually want to make, we actually want to give a good match day experience to, to the teams who are playing, you know, um, because a lot of people turn up to play football. A uh, lot of people pay money to rent a pitch, pay a referee and play football. And if you understand football very well, you want to enjoy, you want to give them a good match day experience and you enjoy yourself in the process. And that's what some of us are trying to do. So I cannot speak for referees who are bad. All I can say is, yes, I encourage every team to talk to their teams, their, their players about discipline. Um, even good referees make mistakes. And how you talk to them is the difference between, you know, going to Sinbin, having a red card, or having the referee understand that they have actually made a mistake. And they, they'll question themselves and think about it. If you, there's no, there's, there's never, I've never seen a referee that you screamed at him so he's changed the decision. I've never seen that before. If And it's funny. What they don't realize is, the more you scream at the referee, the more likelihood decisions are going to go against you because you're getting in his ear. It's, 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 only, it's only common sense, it's only natural instincts. Like you're challenging my decision. Every single time you're challenging my decision, even when it's clear in terms of what I've seen, I'm going to be concentrating on you. I'm not saying that's what I'm going to do, but I'm, naturally I'm going to be concentrating on you. And if there's a file and I think it's 50-50, I'm like, yeah, that's him. You're not getting it. Get off the referee's back. I agree some referees are poor. But, again, play your game of football, put the report in, and let the FAs and the counties deal with that. Be factual. Don't be silly and write things which are not... Be, be, be you, write things which are useful so that the FAs and the counties can deal with those situations. Referees' licenses and certificates, registrations can be cancelled. They can't be cancelled for various reasons. If the if FA finds it, you know, necessary that this person is turning up wearing chest shoes, um, <laughs> and I've seen it before, bruv. I've seen it before. Somebody wearing chinos like these and and, and a shirt and coming to referee game of football. You understand? And not, and not they don't even have a watch, and they, they have a phone. And I've seen it before. But if you're writing this and you're giving logical, factual explanations to the FA, they are going to look into it. I've seen Jamal remove people from the group for things that they, you know, they've been doing. I've removed people from my group for things that so, so, you know, some of them have been doing. Make it factual. Make it logical. Don't make it emotional. And let the authorities deal with it. Eventually, you'll make the game better. I think what I've noticed, and you know, I've got a shout out to myself, uh, Jamal Horn, and uh, Jamal Horn from the London FA, and Mark Steer from the um, from the Southern. Southern Sunday, and yourself, yeah, I mentioned yourself. I think 
I think you guys are very accessible and you guys are willing to, to actually come onto a podcast to actually talk about refereeing. I think what it is is that people, fans, players, managers feel that officials live in an ivory tower and, you know, nothing can touch them. Mm. I think that's, again, you know, I'm just kind of talking on experience. You know, if you're not accessible, and literally I'm not saying that you have to answer every single question, but when certain decisions are questionable, and again, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but, you know, if you say, no, you know, I'm not going to talk about it, see you later, bye, that rouse people up more. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so when I qualified, uh, Jamal was my uh, trainer. And um, even though it's very difficult to reach, he always gets back to me in the end. <laughs> very difficult to reach. Oh, yeah. We're trying to give this guy, you know, no, no, like, he's, he's impossible to reach. I tried to give him a call yesterday. No. <laughs> this guy called me. He, 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 I think he put a game outside and I, and I called him and he said, no, he's busy. He's going to call me back. Send me. And then I called him again. He didn't pick up. And then he called me and I was in the meeting. And I text him that I'll, I'll call you back. He said, oh, no, no, no. The chance is gone. I'm like, look at this guy. This guy. You know? This guy. But, you know, but bless him, you know. <laughs> he's trying. Yeah, he's trying. He's, he's got he's got a huge workload and he's doing a lot of things for, for football that is absolutely incredible. Um, when I qualified, I had you know people like him helping me through, and when 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 he eventually got back to me, I could talk to to him. I could talk through a scenario and he would explain and he would give me advice. You give me football advice and life advice as well on certain situations. Um, there were people like Marlon I haven't seen him in a long time um, there was another guy called Ola that I could talk to there weren't a lot of people that I could talk to but there were a lot of people who gave sound advice every time I spoke to them and it made it, me, it, made it easier for me I understood clearly that um, referee development officers were very few and far between so you had to sometimes get thrown in, you know, in the deep waters and learn to swim. You had to build yourself in terms of the knowledge of the game. But ultimately, knowing how to manage yourself, your emotions, and managing the, you know, those 22 egos on that pitch. If you don't have the right emotional intelligence, you cannot be a referee. Because you're going to get rallied up by the slightest thing. Your confidence is going to go low. You're going to question yourself at every single decision. You're going to lose focus and you're going to make decisions when there's key, ma key match moments or decisions that you have to stand for them and make them. You're not going to make it. You're going to bottle it. You know, you can see that at the, even at the highest level, how much more grassroots level. It's about man. For me, it's about man management. That's a, that's a major thing. Uh, the Southern Vets Football League. Yep. So with uh, the information that I have now, um, well, Division One, eight teams. Yeah. Division Two, eight teams. Yeah. There are certain teams that have played over ten games. Mm hmm. And I and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, LSU have played three, three games. Three games, and the season yeah. started in September. What is going on with this league? Do you think that this league needs a, an absolute shake-up? Let me just put it out there. Let me just put my opinion out there. 100%. Okay. Definitely. Like, you can't have Division 1 and Division 2 having eight teams. Mm -hmm. I, it's, you know, um, this is supposed to be the biggest Vets league in London. Well, why? How, how many... First of all, before you put your opinion out there, how many teams started... It? The beginning of the season in Division One and Division Two, um, was it eleven in Division One? Mm -hmm. Division Two, so ten, ten. Okay, so Gra Gravish um, have dropped out and Bromley, Bromley. Yeah. Now, again, before you put your finger out there, 
do you think is the league's fault for these teams dropping out? I think the league should do their due di diligence before. What and makes you think that the league hasn't done the due diligence with these teams prior to the opening game of the season? We've had Leone Stars, Division 1, that had to fold halfway through the season, last season. They, didn't, they never folded, Leone Stars. Leone Stars? They were suspended. Suspended? Yes. They never oh, folded. Okay. Cor okay. Correction. Mr. Journalist, get your information right. Correction. Okay. But they were turning up with eight, nine players. Leone Stars? Leone Stars. Not Leone Stars. You, you're getting your, your... Leone Stars. You're getting your figures twisted. Leone Stars will always turn up. They'll turn up late, very late, but they'll turn up. Every, they have never given a game away. They've never given a game They've away. never given a game away. They'll always turn up. If they have nine players, they'll play. So tell me the teams in Division 1 that, that, will, that have given their games away. Oh, Metro guys have given the games away that I, I know for a fact. Um, Johnson and, and Phillips, the previous seasons, now they've come back again. I think uh, they're in Division 3, I believe. Um, the real reasons behind the less games played by certain teams, that's what we want to talk about. So when you have teams playing uh, or registering for the London Cup, the Kent Cup, and other external competitions, they, they take precedence over league games, right? Charcoal, for example, now is in the league, the, the Kent Cup, uh, the League Cup, and the London Cup, the London Bits Cup, right? And these games come thick and fast. If any county games come, any game that they were scheduled to play, and you know when these 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 fixtures get these fixtures get put through, say on a on a Sunday night or a Monday morning, because uh, by law the county has they have to give the notification six days six clear days before kickoff. So if as you see, SVL would have put the fixtures through for like a month. You know who we are playing for a month, right? On a Monday morning, the county will send an email through that your county cup game is scheduled for that Saturday. It means that whatever game that you have, the fixer secretary has to see if they can put another game through for you because now you have to play a county game. So the opposition that you're going to play, which is, for example, LSU, he has to see they can find another team who don't have a game who are willing to play them. Now, if there were fixtures already set up and then they knew that they didn't have a game, they would have made plans. These are grown men. They would have made plans. So unless the league forces them and say, well, you need to make sure that every Saturday you are available to play. So you can be given a game on a Monday night and you have to play on a Saturday. It's, there's always going to be issues because if they say, well, there's a stack due, the, we didn't have a game. So all, all of them are going to the stack due. That's a legitimate reason. You're going to tell them to cancel the, the stack due to come and play football. They're going to say no. And when that happens and you're going to punish them because they, are, they have a genuine reason for not being there, you're going to create problems. Eventually, teams are going to leave. When it comes to due diligence, all these teams, even the new teams that are coming through, they play friendlies. They have conversation with league committee members to see whether there's any plans for sustainability over the league. And they come with all the answers. You can never tell if a team is going to drop out midway through the season or not. Glebe were in the cup final last season. You remember that? Yeah. With um, Gra was it Grasshoppers? Or no, no, no. They played um, Grasshoppers. Owens team. Um, Hand Bay. Hand Bay in the final. And then they folded this season. Same with, is it Grasshoppers or Grasshoppers? Is grasshoppers, Oscar. That's the second team where Ish and uh, Odom played, used to play for us. They played in the final last season. 
So you would be thinking that they will be on the high to do better this season, etc., etc. They folded. So many things happened. You can never tell. So I, I, I don't necessarily buy it when it feels like the uh, the league is not doing due, due diligence to make sure that th these teams can. You cannot tell who's going to be there when and where and for how long. You cannot tell. You can believe in the fact that the teams have prepared properly to uh, be able to ha have enough numbers to play every week. Catford, if we had folded um, this season, nobody would blame us. Can anybody blame us? Absolutely not. We, last season, we were struggling. We had 10, 12, 13 players, you know, for most games. Beginning of the season or end of the season, five players, five first team players have left. We should be folding, but we're still here. You know that we've turned up with nine players, 10 players, 11 players. We will play a game of football because that's how we are. But if we wanted to fold and we said, listen, I can't deal with this anymore because I've got other commitments and blah, blah, blah. There's nothing. What, what is the What's the league going to do in terms of commitment? We have, we've, we've, we've tried our best. You see what I'm saying? So you cannot justify that the, the, the league needs to do something else. What, what I believe now is in light of what all that's happened, I think Division 1 should be bigger in terms of merging Division 1 and Division 2. Because I think there's at least four, five good teams in Division 2 who can make the numbers and actually stay up there in Division 1 and compete, properly compete. You know, I think Kawia will be there. I don't know what Sigas is doing now. I, I don't know, but Sigas were, were always there and there about. They've always been there and there about. For the last three, four seasons, they've always been there. Um, I think Catford, in terms of a history, never giving a game away, always always playing a game, never canceling a game. I think Catford will be there. Um, I think um, SB Athletic have a, have a good squad. They will be there. Parkwood as well, I think. Park, yes. So... Uh, Parkwood, yes, they will be there because they, they'll turn up week in, week out. Again, is do some teams want to turn up week in, week out and get beat? Some teams want to stay in Division 2. They don't want to go anywhere. And uh, no disrespect to Parkwood, I, I think they're they are one of those teams. I No, I, I think Parkwood, uh, Parkwood would, would actually want to go up. My conversations with them in terms of their age and their recruitment... Um, they want to enjoy a game of football. You know, they can compete. Even even Ball Street, they're doing really well this season. And they've recruited here and there, and they're doing really well. And I, they've been wanting to fold for a while. They've been wanting to fold for a while, but now they've actually put things together and they're doing it. So if they're doing it now, they could be there. You know, I've given you four teams already. Um, who else? There's at least four or five teams who can... LSU. LSU. Obviously, they cannot go there because they have a, they have a, you know, unless they change their name and yes, but you can see that if if we if we merge division one and division two, it takes away one division, which is fine. it makes it more condensed. It's absolutely fine. It makes it more condensed. You know, some teams can go down, some teams can come up. You can clearly see that even Hayden, Hayden U to division three, they can do a job in division one. I've repped them, I've seen them play, they can do a job. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, there can be reach, there can be a lot of reach out for and to be fair, the committee does it, the league does it at times. At the end of the season, there's a reshuffle. Um, Leonie Stars did not go to Division One by merit. Mm. They were invited if they want to go, and they went and they've been there. And like I said, they haven't given any games away. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So the league, the, the league, you know, do reshuffle. Try to do what's best for the league, put teams where they want to be, um, and even doing so. Sometimes it comes to the beginning of the season, and some 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 people say, "No, you know what? We don't want to go up anymore. We want to stay where we are." You know, you know, you can see that some teams are some clubs are clearly, you know, spanking teams in lower divisions, and you want to bring them up, and they say, "No, we want to stay where we are." There's nothing you can do about it, because people want to enjoy that game and of football, and where where they are. They finish third and they are enjoying it. You want to push them up to somewhere where they are not going to enjoy it? You're going to force them to quit. You're going to force that, that, that team to fold 
But folding, they're not going to go elsewhere. They're going to, the players are going to go into different teams and reshuffle again. But then that causes you a lot of hassle because one team has dropped down. You have to avoid all the games if they haven't played 75% of the league games. That's what's happened to Gravisham. What's, you know, I mean, it's, it's probably going to be very hard for you to answer this question, but what is the league's ethos? It, you know, is it in um, teams or players enjoying their football or creating the best competitive league? Enjoying their football. I would say it's enjoying the football. Competition on one side. Enjoying the football through competition. I come out, yes, I want to compete, but I want to enjoy myself. I come out not only because I want to play football, because I want to meet my friends. You know, I want to come and sit down and have a drink or a chat with my with my mates. It's it's my it's my mode of de-stressing, I'd say. So if you look at the mission statement, it's 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 having it's enjoying football, enjoying competitive football in a very respectful and conducive atmosphere. You know, I'm not I'm not paraphrasing, but the, the mission statement of the league is something like that. To have a very respectful environment, safe environment where teams can come and play football and enjoy themselves. And a good competition. That's it. But also as well, if you play with better teams or play against better players, don't you naturally raise your game as well? But you see, you, you are talking, you know, with the ethos of somebody who wants to compete. You have to realize that not everybody wants to compete. Especially the lower divisions. There's teams in Division 4, Division 5, who, are, who, who I'd say are too good for those divisions. And they shouldn't be there. Try to push them up. They say, no, we want to stay where we are. Yes, absolutely. What are you going to do about it? You can't force them to go there. You see what I'm saying? They want to come and play with their friends and enjoy, you know, a game of football. They, 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 they finish third. They finish second. They said, we don't, we don't want to go up. All you have to do is invite another team. Do you guys want to go up? I said, yes, we want to go up. Bam, they go up. Just like Leonie Stars. And look what they are doing. They are winning games against, uh, what? The last time, what, did they win against them um, last season? Uh, Chuck or something? I don't, I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> the, the thing is this. Point blank, you cannot foresee the, sust the sustainability plans of a team. You cannot foresee if a team is going to fold. You can't, you literally cannot tell the future. There's so many excuses, or there's so many actually facts I can give you about teams, which we've already mentioned about, about Glebe, about, about um, uh, Grasshoppers, that it doesn't make sense why they folded. You just have to take each team on merit and um, feel like they, they, they want to play football. They want to be where they are. They want to even compete and go at a higher level. All I'm saying is eventually it's going to come full circle because now it's not only 40-year-olds or 45-year-olds who, who are actually playing football. Everybody hitting 35, a lot of them, the young boys, are actually coming into it. So it's going to even get more competitive and it's going to fizzle down all through. But I do agree if Division 1 and Division 2 are merged together, it will give even a better comp you know, competition. Uh, let's kind of talk about um, something that not a lot of people know uh, about your vet story. Um, so you was part of independent LSU Peckham. Um, like it's gone through like the name changes. Yeah, I knew this was going to come up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of almost like the elephant in the room without actually be, being being there, if that makes sense. So, um, again, um, not, not uh, and actually, I think a lot of people know that you was part of Independence Journey, Independence Journey into Division One. Um, and you, you left the club. Um, could you talk about why you left? Yeah, so where do I start? 
Oh, okay. Well, I mean, let me just say, I mean, again, um, we've, we've, we've kind of spoken, about, you know, like about this privately. Um, I, I kind of feel that uh, I was probably the, like the reason why you left independent. I know that you've said otherwise, but I think in like in this situation that we're going to talk about now, well, if you can want to talk about it anyway, you know, it was it was a reason why you had that conversation with with the kind of manager um, at the time. Can you can you elaborate? So, um, yeah, I mean, I I joined independent then what Peckham Town. Peckham Town. Um, that was actually when you had hair, that like dreadlocks. You, 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 <laughs> bro, like, I'm, I'm alive. Yeah, I had a head in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, what I want to say, 2016, 2017-ish, long time ago, um, then Peckham Town, uh, who changed the name to London South United LSU. And a lot of politics going on there. So obviously changed from LSU to independent because, you know, even if we won the league, then we couldn't go up because of LSU Masters. Um, so yes, been, been the fabric of independent, I should say, for as long as I can remember. And I still have love for independent. I think you already know that we've spoken about this. I reiterate that, like, you know, it was coming. There's nothing you could have said or done differently that would have changed anything. It, you weren't, I say you were the catalyst um, for that moment to happen, but you were not the reason why I left LSU, uh, or independent, I should say. Um, I left independent not because of footballing reasons, but just because I, could, I, could, I couldn't, I felt like I, I couldn't trust the manager at that time. And um, for me, this is somebody who I, I felt was a friend. I felt betrayed by a friend. Um, so footballing aside, I, I couldn't be around that person anymore. That's why I had to leave. Because if I'm leaving my home, for to distress on the field of play, come and play football, uh, be around my friends, and I, I have to come and still no one to be around one person over there who's 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 at the helm of the team, then then what's the point? I might as well not come. And it, that's what it boils down. Um we were having prior to the season that I, I was I was meant to travel so we're having different conversations about, you know, how long I was going to be there for the for the season, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember I got to a point of, you know, so if if I am going to be there for half the season or say say thirty percent of the season, you know, do, do I pay full registration fees? Um, uh, an answer never came. So I said, well, you, let, let me know what you think, so I, uh, you know, I, I know what decision to make. If, if either I you know, take take myself out of for that season, or or whatever I do, you know, if, because if you said pay, okay, pay the full registration fees, um, yes, I would have paid it because as you know, it was nothing to do with money per se. It was, it was all about the principle. Um, you know what I did when I was at Independent. You know, every every week I'd bring a drink for for everybody to enjoy. Sometimes I'll I, I'll push my wife to cook, to bring to the team. And it was not a penny that I took from the coffers of Independent to do all those things. It was from my own pocket. So, it goes to say, it goes without saying that it, it, this was nothing to do with the money. Um, we disagreed on a few issues. So for example, um, I'm, a, I'm I'm a referee you know, as everybody knows. So if a referee doesn't turn up and we have a full 11 and, you know, full squad, say 15, 16, and I'm not playing, I can referee a game. Now, if I referee a game, that's the job I'm doing. I need to get paid for it. So if the manager decrees that 
nobody who referees for the team gets paid, I think that's ludicrous. I have done a job, I've done a service, because once I officiate, I'm a match official. I've got nothing to do with the independent, I've got nothing to do with the opposition. So I need to decide whether I'm doing that as a favor for the team and say, okay, hold on to the money or I keep the money. That's my prerogative to make. But when someone starts decreeing and say, well, anybody who referees for the team, you're not going to be paid anymore without consulting anybody else. Again, that's ludicrous. And these are some of the little, little conversations behind the scenes which, which we're having. And it's not something I came and told the whole team that, you know, this is what was happening. And I didn't, there's, there's no point. Because again, I, I felt this is my friend. So if anything, we have, we, have, we have to talk privately and deal with the situations. Not to, you know, they, they always say don't, don't, don't air out your, your dirty laundry in, in it. And that, that's what I strongly believed in. So, um, yes, there was, a, there was tension. Yes, there was, a, there was a lot of private stuff that we were talking about that wasn't for the public to know. Which he brought forth when we had this argument on that day. And that made it, that, that sealed it for me, that um, this is not somebody I could trust. This is not somebody I want to be around. On that, on that particular day, for example, well, the Friday night before the game. So there was a, there was a, there was a, a guy who hadn't come training before. Um, I forget his name. Um, Chiwi. And he asked me to register this guy. So he hasn't come training. And even prior to that, there's, there's a guy, Dino, that he, he hadn't come training. Nobody's met him. And w there was a game. Long lane. Long lane. Long that lane. this guy came and all the people who, are, who have been loyal to the team and who have been coming training, he played this guy ahead of everyone. It was not a popular decision. And I remember you questioned him about that. And then he said, oh, it's, it, you know, it's a decision that he felt he had to make. <sighs> Excuse me. But he apologized. You know, he's not, never going to do that again. It was very clear for everybody to see. Everybody said, cool. He made it. We lost the game, but it was a decision at the end of the day, he had a manager. But it's, it, for me, it's, it obviously, it's quite disrespectful to people who pay and come training diligently and come and play, and you don't play them on, on the day, for, you know, and play somebody who nobody knows. For me, it's not about that particular game. It's about the longevity of the team. It's about respecting the people around you. It's about respecting the people who have been there with you through the trenches all that time up to where you are now. So on the Friday night, he asked me to register this guy. I think it was literally on a stroke of midnight. I put a registration through. I called John Forbes, the league secretary, um, you know, having get his, everything done. I sorted everything out. So he was he was available for the next for the next game. Oh, I, actually, I'm um, something that um, that which one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the interruption. And and again, this is like not about the player, like Chewy, like you know. Oh I'm yeah, saying, like, I was gonna say that. Like, yeah. I've always said, I I, I follow him on, on on Instagram. He follows me on Instagram. So yeah. we are not friends, but we know each other. We are yeah. acquaintances per se. You know, it's a nuts case when it, when I'm ref <laughs> when I'm when, when I'm case. yeah when I'm refereeing him. You know, yeah. but hey, it is what he is. He's a decent player. He's a, yeah, he's a um, really good um, pro probably a, you know very good guy. Uh, I just don't know him so. <laughs> but just a nut case on the pitch. Exactly. <laughs> so um, get get him registered. Um, he, he you know Ray had known that I was going to Manchester that the next day on Saturday. So I spoke to him prior to that, you know, if you don't need me, let me know. So that's extra. I can, I can, I can go. Cause I was taking, I think one of my wife's, uh, uh cousin's, um, son to university. Um, his, his graduation present from, from me was that I would take him to school. So it was booked in. So I changed that trip from the morning to the afternoon after the game. So I turned up for the game, did a warm up, everything. You know, one of the very, very first games of the season, I believe. It was against, um, it was at Cold Harbour. Yes, yes, yes. I can't remember the team. Uh, it was, it, it, what was the team uh, Richie was playing for before? I can't remember. Yeah, it, it'll come. Once, as soon as I get, was this Seagulls? I don't know. 
Was it a friendly? Can, you know, I can't remember. No, it was a league game. It was a league game. It was a league game. Remember. A friendly, I would have missed it. But anyway, um, turn up. First living was called. I wasn't there. No problem. I'm not better than anyone. So, as you know me, if I'm called to play, I'll play. If, if I'm meant to stay on the bench, I'll sit on the bench. No problem. As, he asked me to do the the line, the flags. So I take the flags and I go and do the line. Um, first half has gone. No substitutions. Again, I'm thinking nothing of it. And then halfway through the the, the, the half, he brings Chewy on. In my position. So I'm thinking something's not right here. Um, again, I didn't complain. I didn't say anything. Um, this is a repeat of what he did before, which he has said he is not going to do it again. I didn't say anything. Um, but it's not only me on the bench. There, there was you on the bench. There was other players on the bench. And if he had brought him into like, even as a, as a center forward or a midfield, it's still a problem because he's nobody's seen him at training. So he shouldn't be on that pitch ahead of anybody else who's been there. That's how I see it. And that's how he's promised he's not going to do that again. So the whole game goes on. You, 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 you get on the pitch. And I felt I should have been on the pitch even before you because obviously I've been coming training, uh, you know, uh, more times than you. I've been there much days, etc. But again, it's cool. The whole game goes and I don't, I don't get to play. And it, it dawns on me that this is a power trip. This, this is an ego thing. Wanting to show me who's boss. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I, I can't deal with this. I'm done. So I kept quiet. I didn't say anything. Put the flag down. I was going to go get in my car. Drive off. And that would have been it for me. Mm-hmm. That would have been it for me. But when I heard you ask him that question in the car park, it just, the emotions just came out. I'm like, yeah, you said you're not going to do that again and you did it. You know, um, this is BS because this is quite disrespectful. Um, especially when you know my plans that I'm traveling somewhere. So if you don't need me, tell me I don't need you today. You know, you do all those things to get me there, put me on the bench, do the lines, the whole night teams, and you don't know even a word. So I knew what it was about. And obviously he said, you know, talking about various things, but the things that he was saying there, uh, private conversations that we've had, making them bear to back up his case, sold it for me. And I felt like he's not somebody I could trust. So after that, I think in the car, I removed myself from the groups, deleted everything, and that was it for me. Paul called me later on and apologized, saying, you know, in hindsight, he, he, should have, he could have done this or he should have done that. I'm like, yeah, like, I hear you and I appreciate, I can respect that because at least you're, you're a grown man. You've seen the, the situation, you've seen the dynamics. It's not like I'm, I've been in the club for one month. You don't treat me like a 12 year old. It was a heated conversation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it was. It was. It was, it was an emotional conversation. Yeah. You know, but he apologized and, and, and we crack on. But you know, you know, Ray, he's wrong and strong. And he will lie and say oh, everything that he needs to say, you know, to back his case. He's never, have you ever seen Ray backing down of something before? No. And that's him. Good on him. Bless him, whatever he wants to do. Fine. But in life, some people come into your, your, your circle for a reason. Uh, they teach you so many things. And they move on. Some people come and they stay as well. And you can know who you can trust, who you can move forward with it, and so on and so forth. I still have I still have friends at Independent. I still talk to a lot of guys. And, and you know, after that, there have been barbecues at my house that Independent guys have come to my house. So I've got love for independent. I've been a fabric of independent from the day, from the very beginning to where they are. I, I have helped them get to where they are. So every success, all, all the trophies that we've had with them, you know, it, it will be my, it will be with me forever. 
I have nothing but love for independent. I just can't trust him. So therefore I cannot be there. Would you have a sit down conversation? For what though? As men, yes, we can talk. But if there's no reasoning, there's no apology, there's no understanding of what's happened. I, 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 there might be so many different points of view of where it's coming from, but the facts are quite simple. Irrespective of whatever is going on, you played somebody ahead of me who you shouldn't have. Somebody ahead of you who you shouldn't have. Somebody ahead of other people who were there, who have been part of independent, who've been coming, training, and doing the due diligence, paying the registration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Something you promise you're not, not going to do. And to today, never apologize for that. So, what are we going to sit down and talk about, really? If I, I don't have a problem, we can sit down and chat. But to what effect? I, I know I can trust you. And as you, you, you know me for a while now, I am loyal to a fault. But when I cut the cords, I cut the cords. I, I've seen him so many times. We've had a fist bump here and there. We say hi here and there. Um, when, uh, when his father passed away, I was with him in this house to help him clear up and, and all that. You know, I was, I was there for him. Uh, when my mom died, he, he actually called and sent, left me a, a voice message. You know, it's cool. You know, we, when we meet, we can act cordially. But I think it's done. I don't know. I don't think we can we can ever get back to that because I think this is so far gone now. I don't think we can ever get to back to the space where we were, where I can invite you and your wife and your children to come to my house, come have dinner. I can come to your house and do that thing. I think, I think the betrayal has been so bad and, you know, I think we maybe we both moved on. I said me have, you know, I have no, I don't hate him. I have no issues. It is what it is. But like I said, I think people come to your life for a reason. Some will stay, some will leave. And that's, that was just a, 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 you know, a chapter of my life where I needed to learn some things about what, who I can trust and who, you know, what I can tell people, et cetera, et cetera. And that's it. You know, we live and we learn. So that's the reason why I left independent, not for f footballing reasons, because I couldn't trust the manager. It's that simple. I said to you, um, and this is why what I want, want to say, to, you know, to, to close that chapter is I could have put the text messages in the conversations before I left. I could have put a lot of the conversations that we had in, that com in, in our group to make things worse, to smear to cause commotion. I thought about it, I'm like, I don't need to clear my name. I know what I've done. I know the people who actually know me know, know how I roll. And there's some things that if you know me well, you know that I will never do this or that. And there are people I spoke to and said, you know, this dictatorship business I'm talking about, this um, unreasonable you know, um, decrees that sometimes happen that he brings about, that I'm talking about, you're going to find out on your own some way, somehow. It's been, what, two years now? It's longer than that. Three? That's right. Yeah, two and a half years. Two and a half years, three years. I think it's two and a half years. Something like that. But people have left independent and they've sent me text messages and I see what you're talking about. I see exactly what you're talking about. And they've, they've, they've sent me messages like that. So I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm justified, but what, what would the point of me to destroy independent or destroy the vibe in independent when I could just leave and they can carry on their, their chapter and then people can find out for them themselves if I think posterity will tell whether I made the right decision or not. I'm happy because I made the right decision. I'm happy because I feel it's the right thing to do. I've moved on. I'm still enjoying my football. And it's, it's, this is another, another different chapter in my life. I'm going to grab, grab onto it like, a, you know, with two hands, like I've done everything else. I'm going to move on with it. Past is the past. Let's go uh, move on to a bit of a lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, I can uh, put out um, a post and also I put something out in our Catford group as well. Mm-hmm. If there's any questions that people would <laughs> want to ask you. Right. And boy, got some questions though still. Did you now? I got some questions. I swear down to you. So, okay. I, I know who's going to ask you those questions. All right. Okay. Um, question one. Um, what's with the hour and a half arrival time before games? <laughs> what do you mean? Was that standard? That's S O P. That's standard operating procedure. If you give people thirty minutes, they'll come fifteen minutes to kick off. Listen. Yes, we are not a professional setup. But if you're doing things and you want to do it right, you have to do it right. Um, I understand when people are working so they can only get their 45 minutes to kick off, etc. But especially like in a season like this when it's cold, you have to get there. You have to bond with the team. You listen to your music. You warm up properly. You get together. You stay warm before the game. A lot of people are having injuries because they don't warm up properly. Ashley. <laughs> I can't. Ashley got injured like that. And, but, but I understand it's not because he doesn't want to get there, probably because he's working. He is working. You understand? But if you can't, for example, if we we we, we have a bare 11 uh, b- before kickoff, and, uh, you know, he's just coming 10 minutes to kickoff, I can't say, you know, sit down, we'll start with 10 against 11. I have to play him. Because... You know, regardless, we want to be in the game. We don't want to lose the game even before it started. And it's happened like that. He's come, he's not actually warm. He's tweaked the hammer. And, and that's, that's what it is. You have to come early. You have to warm up, be in the zone, be, be prepared to go to war. An hour and a half is nothing. It's an hour and 15 minutes. It's not an hour and a half. It's an hour and 15 minutes. By the time, pe- some people take like, 30 minutes to get ready. I don't even mention names. They don't mention names. I don't mention names. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, yeah. I don't, I don't know 15 minutes is, 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 is standard SOP. Okay. Next question. Um, what would you say your Catford's attacking approach to games is? Catford's attacking approach. So, um, that's a deep question and I'll explain why. If I had my ideal personnel to start the game with and the people on the bench, if I had, say, 16 men, and I'm not going to mention names because I, I respect everybody, on, you know, who turns up, but I have a team in my, in my head that I would be able to start in the formation I, I want to play, right? If I had that ideal personnel on the day, I would love to play a 3-5-2. And uh, because I think that, you know, that ideal personnel, we can do a lot of damage up front. And um, also, you know, regurgitating the ball every time it comes in the midfield. I think the, the ideal, um, you know, defense as well would deal with anything which is thrown at them. So three five two will be ideal for me in terms of my attack information. It's about I don't I don't like beautiful nonsense. I don't like beautiful nonsense. Yeah, you're popping the ball about that word beautiful nonsense. Yeah, man, that's popping the ball about going nowhere. You know, you can be direct when you have to be. You can. I want you to play forward. Be patient, but play forward when you have to be. Put yourself in the right positions to win those 50-50 balls. When the opposition defender hits the ball, you know, and it falls somewhere, I want us to be able to be there. And if I had my ideal person on the pitch, there are people I can put in certain positions who are able to do exactly that. And three, five, two will be ideal for me. At the moment, I'm having to chop and change because of obviously the personnel that I have and the numbers that I have as well. I have to think of the season, whole season, not just that one game. I can't pe- put, play people in certain positions because, you know, they'll probably last 30 minutes 
and probably get injured. And then we miss them for the next week. Every single person has a role to play in that team. Every single, whether it's 30 minutes today or the full game next week, every single person has a position to play. So if everybody's there, everybody will actually understand what the vision is, where we want to go. I want to kind of say something regarding the formation that you would like to play. Okay. I just want to say mm-hmm. that the 4 4 2 for me is, is, very out, is very outdated. And with the personal that we have, I don't think we have the players to play the 4 4 2. But, yeah, but we've had this conversation and you actually know that 4 4 2 is not my preferred style of play. You actually know that. But again, it's about the personnel that we have on the day that determines what we can what we, what we have to play. We have some very quick wing backs and we have some very standard d- decent right back left backs. For example, we have three good center backs. We four, I'd say. And if all these if 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 for example our full backs don't turn up our, our wing backs don't turn up for some reason that week. I don't think we have people with those same attributes who can do that same job consistently for like 70 minutes. Okay. I have people who can do the the full back positions for 80, 90 minutes. But they can do the wing back role going up and down, holding onto the ball, creating spaces, drawing people in. I don't have I don't have the people who can do that for, for for you know consistently for ninety minutes. If if you, if what I'm saying is right, so okay. the personnel determines what what kind of formation that we play. Simple as. Okay, we'll leave we'll leave that one there. Uh, next question: uh, If Catford goes up to Division One, what areas have to be reinforced? Right now, it's a lot of areas that need to be reinforced. I think we need we need we need more we need we need a we need a centre back we need one more centre back um, because it's a long season. I think um, we need a striker. You know, um, and we need a, we need a, another midfielder. I think we need a goalkeeper. Number one, that's number one. So I can stand outside and and, and do my my bit. But um, considering the length of the season, the, the number of games, you know, the commitments and, and as, as, for example, the recognized centre backs that we have, we, we have four: you, Wes, Tony, and Dan Walker. Dan can obviously play in, mid, in, in the midfield. Now, um, if the three of you are there, if, if say three of of the, of the four of you are there, I can clearly play. A three at the back. But if two of you are missing, I can't play three at the back. I cannot. You see what I'm saying? So it, it's all about the personnel that, you know, is there to determine what, what I need to play. But there's, I think there's, we have a lot of players who are also injured. Don't forget that. So when these players all come back and we have a full squad, I think, I still think we need a striker. I, I don't think, um, Someone like Johnny, you know, I, I love him in the number 10 position. You know, Johnny can play there, Obin can play there. You know, we're still missing Seb. You know, in, in the 3 5 2 system, we can, we, Seb can play up top. I don't think Steph, Steph alone um, and Ash, when needs be, can carry the whole season like that. Last season, we had Steph, we, we had. Uh, uh, Boogie, we had Johnny, uh, we had Obin in number ten, and we had um, Ashley who did the job as well. Even even um, gaps, who got goals? You understand? So we had a lot of options, and people could score goals. Now we don't. Next question: um, Do you believe in treating all players the same way, or do you think better players deserve better treatment? I think you can answer that question for me in terms of knowing my personality. What would what would you think? What would you say? Um, I hear you know not 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 how what you, not what you think should be done, but what you think I would do. 
I'll be absolutely fair. So against the Bromley game, I'm not going to mention any names, the Bromley game, there was a particular player that was quite erratic. Mm. And you was <laughs> talking to him like how, how like you would talk to me. And I can remember. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I did say to you, you can't talk to him how you talk to me. There's a, there is a different way to, to kind of communicate. I did say that to you, right? Yeah. But you, you, but you, you were not privy to the conversation that I've, I've had to, with him prior to that game. It doesn't matter what happens prior. It's when you're in game, your emotions get the best of you. So you as manager, you like have to communicate differently to different players. Right. In so, my opinion. True. Um, to answer your question, I would say that um, I know that I treat every player fairly. Um, I want to give, I have given everybody an opportunity to state their case, retain their shirt. And I've put it in the group. I mean, from last season, when the announcement was made, I said, in, said it in front of everybody. For the beginning of the season, I've said it. If you come training, you've paid your substitution, your, your, your subs and your registration, you come match day, you play well, you play. It's that simple. I'm not. I'm never going to bring somebody from outside and just stick him in and say, he's a better player than you, so you, you stay on the bench. It's always been a case of, he's you're doing the right things you're coming training you're playing well so you play it's always been like that with me any new player who's come has been on the bench i strongly believe that the good players the players themselves i mean the rest of the team subconsciously choose them to start because when they come and they sit on the bench and they come in and they make a difference in the game you already know that this person is better than me at that particular position. So if you're a team player and want to win the game, you are expecting that he, because he's better than you, should start ahead of you. If you're a team player. This a perfect example is Nathan, independent, when he joined. Um, came in, he was on the bench, Came in at half time, changed the whole game. The next game he started, and he started. He, so far as I was there, he started every game ever since, because of the quality. He was going up and down the pitch. I was not getting tired. Quality on the ball, strength, everything. So everybody was saying, "Oh, that guy's a baller. He should start, right?" And it's the same thing. If a manager chooses that player because of what everybody has seen them do. There's not a lot of things that you can fault about that decision, provided that good player is coming to training and doing the right things or has a legitimate, legitimate reason for not being able to come training. I, they live like, what, two hours away in rush hour time. It doesn't make sense for them to be able to, or they're working around that time. It doesn't make sense for them to be able to come training. If they can come, if they pay their, 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 their registration and they can be there every Saturday, fair enough. They, have, they play a part in the game. There's nobody, so far as I'm concerned, who is first on the team sheet because they are, they are a better player, so far as I'm concerned. And I think I've, I've made it very clear for you all to see. There's nobody I've said that you, and you can't be substituted. Everybody, Bernard Boy says, everybody go to your breakfast. <laughs> when is your time? It's your time. You are not better than anyone. If you, if this is a, and again, this is a collective team effort. Um, you come, you've, if you have 60 men, if you've played 60 minutes, we are 4 nil up. The people on the bench, we have a, a county cup game next week. I'm taking you off. What's the point on keeping you on, on front so that you can get probably get injured? I know you want to score a goal, and and a prime example is Johnny. And I I know he's not he's not going to be upset for me for saying that. 
because, I mean, John is my guy. So I, I, I speak to him ex exactly the same way I'm saying now. Johnny will moan when I'm taking him off because I haven't scored yet, you know, because I'm playing. I'm, I'm, I, I'm like, and then he's very emotional. He's very passionate. So he's like, why are you taking me off? I'm not. I'm like, Johnny, chill. But after the game, we'll talk. And I'm like, Johnny, like, we have a game next year, ne next week. We have a big game. Yes, you haven't scored, but what's the point? You know, for example, you're nursing an injury. You've done your bit for the team. You haven't scored, but we're winning the game. Three, three, three nil, four nil. What's the point? Give people some minutes. Because the, the next week, that, if you're not there, if I play the whole 90 minutes, the people who sat on the bench in that cold winter's afternoon, they're going to feel, oh, well, I'm going to come and sit on the bench anyway, so why, why should I come? They won't come. And that's probably when we need them the most. And if I play the same 11 every single week, then the, the rest of them might as well, you know what? There's no point for me coming. It's new guy, Adrian joined us, remember? Mm -hmm. um, yes, Adrian, yes, Colombian. yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, and this is one, one of the reasons why I'm actually loving what I'm doing. Because... You know, I, about 20 minutes ago, I, I spoke to him when the ball went down. I said, listen, I know you're there. I know it's cold. You know, it might not be today, but I, I guarantee you get your chance at times. He, said, he told me, no, no worry. Because I, I knew, you know, you, you see the, the players on the, on the sidelines, their eyes bend into the side of your head. Yeah. You know, they are, they are subconsciously telling you that when am I coming on? When are you going to substitute for, you know, everybody wants to play. I get that. So when we're 2-0 up and I'm like, you know what, it's, it's what, 10 minutes to go? You know, give him a chance. We haven't really seen him play. So he's uh, an unknown factor. He comes on, his first touch, he scores. And it's a good goal as well. And it's a good goal, like some side back heel. Some, some. And he comes to me, he runs to me in goal, if you remember. Yeah. And he says to me, thank you for putting your trust in me. And for me, that was amazing. That was amazing because it, it, it like just feels like the people understand your position, the difficult decision that you have to make. And yes, it's an unknown, unknown, unknown factor. He's gone in there as a striker. He's done his job. And the next training, we play training. We, we, we joined Santos to play, you know, missed a few chances. And he, he, after the game came in, it, it told me, listen, number one, really thank you for playing me the, the other day. And I know I've missed a, lot, a few chances today, but Saturday, I guarantee you, they're going in the net. That's confidence building. So if two or three people are doing that, they are on the high, it's going to filter through the whole team. And, and in games like these, as soon as you have one going here, one going there, you're not on the same page, you're only going to have problems. But if everybody's on the same page, you're building confidence, bro, it's just going to get better. When everyone is fit and available, uh, who is your best centre-back <laughs> duo? Definitely not you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you know, listen, you've got to be honest here. So no, I'm not, going, I'm not going to answer the question. Oh, how, how, why not? No, I'm not going to answer the question. you got to answer the question. No, no, I'm not going to answer that question because... um. I, I don't think it's fair on uh, everybody else in terms of, you know, I can, I can, I, I can answer the question based on form. Okay, go ahead then. Right? Okay, answer it on form then. Uh, yeah, so, so, um, there's four of you now, right? Dan Walker, you, Wes, and um, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared now. <laughs> and and um, I've always known that you're a confidence player. If you play one game here and play one game, one game one month, the next game another month, you are useless. You you, you need a rhythm to go. Um, so the more you've played, which which has happened this season, the more games you've played, and 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 it's it's is um tantamount to the fact that you're there most weeks now. And if you're there most weeks and you come in training, you play. It's exactly the ethos I'm, you know, I said in the beginning. Um, Tony has been consistent week in, week out. Every, ever since I've been at Catford, 
Tony is Mr. Consistent. So Tony starts. Now, um, the, the, and I, I like to play three at the back. Bro, we don't know. It says two. So let's yeah. pretend that well, you can like, play So two. if I'm playing two, you can play two. Um, I will play Dan in the midfield because I think he can do a job. That's not the question, bro. I, I'm, I'm answering the I way I want to answer it. Like, the question was... Dan is not a centre-back. He's a midfielder. He can do a job as centre-back. Okay. So it's be, it'll be between you... Too much, man. Just be, answer your question, bro. It'll be between you and um, and Wes to, pair, to partner Tony. Now... Again, based on form, you get a nod. Based on form, you get a nod. Based on attributes in terms of ball at the feet and in the air, I think um, Wes is slightly better with the ball at the feet than you. When you play a lot of games and you're confident, you, you, you get to be able to bring the ball out and play more, which is what we want to see, not just hoof the ball, you know. But um, naturally, instinctively, I think West is slightly better at the ball at the feet. Um, in the air, I think you're both pretty decent in the air. So I have no problems with that. So based on form, now I'd play you and Tony. Did you hear that, Wes? <laughs> Based on form. Based on form. I know Wes is going to come in at, at, at training. like, I heard your ADD. Nah, nah. No, but listen, nah. you know what? I'm going to get... But was... I love this because Wes is a, an amazing player. He's funny. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I love it as well because I'm um, like, before anybody says anything, Wes, after the game, would text me on the side and like, I'll oh, gaffer, rare, 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 rare. And... He's not emotional about it. He just states facts. So we have a conversation and we talk about, yeah, we could have done this better, we could have done that better. And I, and I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, and it's a good player, good player. Um, but the energy is really good. He's an honest, he's a, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good, decent guy. And we need people like that. We need the people like that in the squad to be able to bring everybody together and fight together. Wes, Sean, you, like, I, I believe I've got a good crop of people around me. I mean, and like, the competition is amazing, especially at centre back alone. Yeah, I mean, like the banner after the last game was just crazy. Like, we've, we've gaps there, we've all been with his, I don't know what he was wearing. What 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 was Obin wearing? Wait, stop stop talking about what Obin was wearing. How did you have your face down and your, your ass up in the air? Because I was injured. You're injured. I was, listen, I was in the, I was in pain. I couldn't move. Where's the camera? So. I couldn't move. Just to say, this guy said he was injured and I'm going to post the video at some point. Because <laughs> I still have it. Listen, I This guy move. is feeling besh, as, as an African would say. Feeling besh, feeling all the vim and all the, and then running and he's like, 90 minutes, almost, almost 90 minutes, like 80 minutes in the yeah, game. Yeah, it was like 80 certain minutes. And there's a ball, there's a ball, somebody's going to the corner. Nothing ball. And this guy decided to use a sprint. The guy's facing the corner flag. This guy sprints to him, pulls the hammy. No, no, it, it was Or oh, 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 quad. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then ends up with his face <laughs> by the hedges and his ass up in the air, waiting for the foxes to come and doggy him. <laughs> I could, I couldn't move. So, I was in so much pain. Yeah, this, yeah, this is my centre back. So he has no right to talk about anybody's fashion sense <laughs> or anything. That video is coming out. Stay tuned. Oh, but the banter in that changing room was just ridiculous, man. It was good, but again, this this is what we want, isn't it? You know, win, lose, or draw. This is what we want. We want to be able to have a very safe environment, very conducive environment where we can laugh you know we can even argue we can debate on things but we can, at the end of the day we still remain friends we still remain family we still remain brothers because it's so so important right now you, you, you may not even realize but this thing about mental health you and i we've been talking for, about this for time i remember the first time we made we made we had um a recorded interview what was in your car and we were talking on those lines all those years ago 
now it's, now it's a lot bigger. You know, everybody's talking about mental health, but it's so, so important that you see when COVID hit and people were staying home, you see the rise in mental health cases. You see the rise in mental, in domestic violence. You see how women got beat up at home because they were cramped up in one space that, you know, you couldn't deal with it. You are there stuck and, you know, if, even if it's nagging, if it's this, whatever it is, it's no excuse. But if you compare those, the, the rise in mental health cases on, at, around those times as to now, you can see the difference. The cases have gone down because people are coming out more in the sunshine. They are coming out to play football, coming out and doing some activities. So football is, a, is, is an escape for a lot of us. Grown men. It's, a, it's an escape for a lot of us and it must be protected at, at all costs. It's, yes, you want to win. Yes, you want to compete. But the fact that you're able to, and you're, you're able to come out of the house and enjoy that time with like-minded people, you know, laugh and exercise. There's so many endorphins that are released in your body that is only healthy for you. So we must be able to protect this at all costs. And that is the kind of culture that I would love to continue to create at Catford. Define success for you. Success. Success is a being, for me, being able to have a stable home. To be, to, for me, be able to, um, I mean, this, I'm talking about success in life, not just in football. It's for, for, for me being able to provide for my family that they lack nothing, that they are, they are happy, you know, um, that is success for me. Like, you know, being able to provide for my family, being able to, you know, be there for my family um, and those who depend on me. If I'm able to bring a smile on, on, on their faces, to, to, I'm able to make them lack nothing, I believe I've been successful. That's success for me. Um, I just want to say, um, I think I've mentioned it before, but again, you know, I just want to mention it again. Um, you was captain at Peckham Town at the time when we first met. Yeah. And again, I, I was probably like the weird guy with a with a selfie stick talking, talking <laughs> to myself. And uh, you was the first person that actually I kind of had an interaction with regarding uh, having an interview on that camera. Yeah. And I... And I 100% believe that when the players saw the captain talking to like myself, then it just opened up every single door. So I just want to thank you for, for like, you know, this should be the key. You're welcome. You're most welcome, brother. Like, um, I think we've come, we, I think we've come a long way. I see the hard work you put on behind the scenes. Um, I see your laziness at times. <laughs> You know, and I know I know there's a lot more to come. You don't just talk about vest football. You talk about a wide range of topics that are actually relevant in football and in life. You you share people's life stories. Um people who have who have made it to the top, but are still just human and and, and we we struggle with the same sort of mental illnesses, you know, the stress related issues. And once you talk to the, those kind of people, it transcends. A lot of people can relate to it. Um, you know, we've spoken about so many things, you know, over the years. And like I said, it's not only just about vest football. So it's very relevant to a lot of people. And I'm happy always, like I, you already know, I'm happy to be a part of that. You know, provided you're doing the right things, I'm happy to help and support in any way I can. You know, um, but also we, I think we've gone, we've gone, we've grown to know each other for a while now, and uh, you know, our families know each other, and um, you know, I, I consider us good friends, you know, brothers. So um, it's, it's always been my pleasure.